Hi, Mish here. And we had to pop out to the cabin to answer some questions from the electrician. And as promised, I had a few minutes. We're going to test fire the Atlantic Firearms Russian. This is an Ishesk AKM build. We already had a preview. This is on a Childers receiver. And it's with an FB Radom Cold Hammer Forge Chrome Line 16 and a quarter inch barrel. Standard bail lug, 13 mil threads, standard mags, original Russian furniture, you know the deal. But we're going to try Wolf, Red Army, and some Cellar and Bellot in it, a few different mags. See how it works. Of course, this is 762 by 39. Don't have a lot of time today, but I figure if it runs 100 rounds or so, we're pretty solid. We'll give it a go. Um, as always, if you could, please like, share, subscribe. If you'd like to help out check out patreon it's starting to become spring out here the leaves are coming in so very soon we'll start building the range with the new targets thanks to the range builder tier over there on patreon so if interested check her out and with that let's see how this runs i just grabbed a pouch of three uh russian or egyptian mags you know pretty standard spec mags to try out and in between the shooting sections, we'll be doing some comparing and also addressing some questions and concerns that came up in the uh, comments of the preview video. Alright, let's start off with Cellar and Bella. One of the few AKM style imports we have is actually really good to compare with an early Ishesk. That would be the Hungarian FEG SA-85M because Hungary was one of the first nations to begin licensed production so their initial guns were very similar to early Russian. For example, this has the original I style rear trunnion it has the non-lightning cut gas block and front sight base. Of course, they're machined. It has the muzzle nut. Of course, it has its own unique furniture. And something that came up in the PSA video and the Ishesk was the bolt carrier. When you think of AKM, you think of a lightning cut. That is true most of the time. But the first few years of production, a couple of years in Russia, it was the AK-47 style non-cut carrier, and that's actually carried over to the Hungarian guns along with the early style top cover. Something else, this Hungarian, and I looked at some parts kits and they have it too, has the pretty large shelf on the safety. And one of the things I wasn't sure about, and I'm still not 100%, but this shelf might actually be correct on this Russian. I can tell you the serial does match. So I'm not as sure that the safety isn't original or at least the original pattern to the gun. And another fun thing, this Hungarian actually does feature the three spot welds over the dimple that early Tulas and Ishesks had. Again, these are just kind of neat because of their early styling. With that, now let's try out some Red Army Standard. If someone wants an authentic AKM import, semi-automatic, the best we've ever had, of course, is the Egyptian Factory 54 Mod E, ARM or Misser. Of course, as we talked about in other videos, this is really a Tula 1970s style, but very Russian, right down to the gloopy paint over kind of gray phosphate underneath. And since it is a 70 Tula, 
It has the later style machine departs with all the lightning cuts, lightning cut front sight base. It has the small lightning cut under the gas block. It has the kind of soft cut to the handguard. It has pretty much Tula style dimples here. I will say the spot welds on the children's receivers are a little little large to me, but that's better than no visible spot welds at all if you're going for authenticity. And of course it has the crutch folder, which you could just as easily put the uh, standard one on. But no, it, it's just, uh, it's really as good as uh, you're going to get. And it's pretty nice, I, I would say. And they stack up well. With that, we have one more ammo type. And let's try a symbol. After the Mahdi, the second best, most authentic AKM style import would of course be some various Romanian models. And I would say the SAR-1 is slightly closer than the Wasser-10. If nothing else, because it does have magwell dimples. Now, I'm not one of those purists that hates the Wasser for not having the dimples. If I'm being honest, it barely registers with me. But if you're comparing them and just saying, hey, which is better, I, I do think to have the dimples is better than not. But not having them is not a deal breaker for me. Also, the SAR1s just seem to be a little bit better put together than at least some generations of Wasa. Now, when I say best or second best, I don't mean in terms of reliability, even durability, certainly not accuracy. I just mean authentic spec. And the uh, Romanian PM63 derived guns can have some early features too, or later, like this does have the lightning cut carrier. It does have the later style top cover and the uh, later style push button. But it still has an earlier style gas block, what have you. The only reason the Mahdi is a little bit closer really has to do with the finish. This just has a phosphate finish, and the Mahdi has the paint. Also, Romanians made the scope rail a standard feature, and to be fair, the AKM, while some did have scope rails, it was not standard, so you're really splitting hairs, I think, either Romanian or an Egyptian gun would be very, very adequate as an AKM in anyone's collection. But hey, we're just, you know, chatting. And of course, it's my trusty old gun that I've had since the very beginning of my AK collecting. And it's wearing dong furniture that was once extremely cheap. Um, it is no longer. But yeah, kind of looking at these, pretty much the same. And uh, what have you? Good old traditional stamped guns. And one more to compare to because it's actually very relevant to the build parts here, barrel and receiver. The WBP Fox or Jack in this case. In fact, I think a new version without a side rail just came out. This is mine. And it too is quite close to being a authentic AKM. It's got the paint finish. It does have a smooth top cover instead of ribbed. That's probably its biggest deviation, but it has very classic Polish laminate wood furniture. And I do want to talk about the wood furniture vis-a-vis -vis this Russian. But before that, let's run one more mag, kind of mixed ammo just of what's left over through our Russian. Alrighty, one more through the Atlantic Russian.
So I've gone on record many times about how much I appreciate the, the BBP. And it's a gun that has earned my respect. It, it, did, it did not get it because it didn't have a factory to draw upon. They kind of made their reputation... And, um, yeah, this one, and there's a few different variations, but it has the lightning cut front sight base. It has the later style cast gas block with the lightning cut down there versus the machined. It has a cast retainer. And, again, that's not a bad thing. Uh, mil military ones were, too. I'm just pointing out the differences. Interestingly, it actually has the rear sight with the notches on the right side instead of on the left and that actually is one feature that kind of seems incorrect to me on this build now i will say this rear sight it is e-pin matched to the kit so it is original to the kit and the rear sights were always e-pin they weren't stamp matched so it's possible but i feel like it's a replacement because early guns typically had the notches on the right and the button on the left instead of the button on the right and notches on the left. Why? Because the original AK, AK-47 was like this. One of the changes and presume improvements for the AKM after a couple of years of production was switching this over. There would also be a variant with a lightning cut on the underside that would eventually go away, but that's kind of neither here nor there. And let's talk the furniture, specifically the hand guards. Now, Polish laminate wood is quite famous. It's very attractive, very solid, although originally they would start off using hardwood, but soon go over to lamination, whereas Russia did a type of laminate arctic birch with uh, the very famous coating on the the lacquer type, which could range from brown to right, a lighter red to almost a blood red, and wood pistol grips. The wood pistol grip would actually hang around for a couple of years, not really disappearing until 62 or so. And also some first production Romanian guns from 63, 64, maybe 65, would have wood pistol grips. So it was a process from AK to AKM. It really was. And that, that shows in the furniture too. I put this wood grip on. I've had it for a while. It's appropriate. At first I wasn't sure about the handguard because it does not have a hole in the bottom. But after researching, that hole was not there originally. It was added into production maybe around 65 just kind of guesstimating here. Now this Polish doesn't because their wood furniture is made a little different. But we can look at the Egyptian again and it does. Also, the cut of the buttstock is different here. So the more I focus on the furniture, again, especially the lower, I feel like it is correct. If not, the original is correct for a relatively early Ishes. But again, if, if you feel differently, please let me know. And another reason I wanted to bring the jack out is the other guns we've looked at have all been imports, even this, even if it's a commercial import. This is a parts kit build because we have no true import Russian AKMs. In fact, we're lucky to get parts kits. Now, from the get-go, the stamped part of the kit had to be cut. Originally saw cut, but for the last 20 five years, 20 years at least, torch cut. So we need to use a U.S. receiver or something else. And Atlantic, as well as I've done in the past, picked a Childers receiver. And these are nice. These are done in the U.S., they're finished out, but they actually start off as uh, blanks, you know, stamping blanks in Poland, essentially just like these. Which I have to explain to why you see kind of the larger spot welds here to here. And one nice thing about the AKM, at least up till now, they don't make them cut up the trunnion. 
which is why we still have the original ishs marking the original serial number original date this is actually very fortunate because they could from the very beginning have considered this as part of the receiver because when it comes to an import you'll notice the stamped part does not have a serial on it it's located up here but when it comes to a kit build we can retain these original markings but we can't use them as the serial so you'll have a serial on this lower part some people say that this stamped part should be serial matching up here yeah you can do that and it looks aesthetically nice but it's not correct because on a military gun this stamped section would not have a serial number in fact it was pretty devoid of markings except for selector markings in general all your markings are up here by the way all military trinians forged wbp forged so that was the law of the land since really parts gets got going but in 05 the barrel got caught up so while some early russian kit imports typically the plos can have the original russian barrel most don't most russian kits came in after the so-called barrel ban in 05. that was done via the power of the executive branch so nominally under the office of president but the atf the tech branch there reinterpreted machine gun and therefore barrels had to be cut up now i will give you a caveat most people think the little y in a circle marking means russian and it does however romania uses a very similar marking Romanian barrels are much more common, so if you're thinking to get in a Russian barrel, just do your due diligence. That's all I'm going to say. It's, you know, better to be safe than sorry, because original Russian barrels go for bank, which is why this has a Polish barrel. In fact, essentially, the same Polish barrel is here, because luckily, factory new, Cold Hammer Forge, chrome line, 16 and a quarter inch AKM spec barrels have come in from what was once factory 11 circle 11 fb radium today and they are excellent for building kits so if you can't get an original russian barrel or german or hungarian a polish barrel does the job and that's the same barrel that wbp used in this gun here an fb radium so actually this gun and this gun have the same barrel and very very similar receivers both receivers start off as polish steel the childers though gets you know put together welded together heat treated here so at least it's in spec as far as that goes i just wanted to point that out and speaking of in spec after we've run 100 rounds a little more through this gun how's it holding up no issues Again, didn't have a lot of time today, but that's three different types of ammo, uh, three different mags in total. We'll throw it on the table and look inside to see how the wear is. The safety is not at all loose on this. The furniture hasn't walked loose. No first impressions of note. Pretty smooth. Keep in mind this is with a muzzle nut, no type of recoil check, muzzle brake. But, uh, yeah, we'll get into a little more details back at the table. Well, let's strip it apart and look inside. Also, I want to talk about some claims that Atlantic was using rusted out, beat up parts kits to, to build these and or remarking the parts to match and or refinishing the wood furniture what's the truth because there is some truth in those claims but first yeah let's see how the guts look after some rounds nothing to really report about the top cover or recall spring these are our original parts like i said this does have the correct eye style trunnion correct early style selector and as someone pointed out they are using at least part of the original fire control group but 
semi-automatic only. And let's look at the bolt group, how it's held up. Well, it's certainly a lot dirtier than it was this morning. <laughs> Keep in mind, these are not new parts for sure. So there could be old wear. But there's not any serious peening. Firing pin moves freely. Bolt carrier has really no peening on the tail, which is honestly to be expected. It's one of the benefits of using the original group. Piston has the appropriate amount of wiggle wobble. And inside. Again, since this is the original machined trunnion, I haven't really noticed any adverse wear. Some finish wear on the rails is to be expected when something's new. But, yeah, I didn't observe anything shooting, handling it afterwards, or even here at the table. But I did mention the trunnion, and that's a good place to switch over and talk about the rusty parts and, you know, the condition of the kits themselves. Okay, what I can tell you is simply the answers to the direct questions I asked Atlantic. Now, you can believe them, or you can say they're lying. The thing is, if you feel like they're lying, nothing they could say or I could say would, would change that. And if you think a company isn't honest, you should definitely not give them your money. And I'm not saying that sarcastically. You know, if you don't have faith in a company, you, you don't. And We've all had bad experiences with different companies and don't want to do business with them. That said, my track record, which goes back about 20 years with Atlantic, is positive. I've never had serious issue, and I've never caught them overtly, intentionally lying or even exaggerating the condition of a product. Now, have I noticed things slip through? Absolutely. I do it. I've let guns come out of my place that I thought were in good shape and then they had flaws. That's what happens because we're human. And I don't think AI would do much better. So I did ask, did they remark re-serial serial numbers? No. And frankly, I believed them really just because of the time. To go through, look at every kit, and rescrab numbers would take a lot of time. I just don't think it's worth it because Atlantic ships hundreds of guns per day. It's just simple economics. This isn't one guy in his garage doing this. In that case, it's actually much more likely. Now, of course, the metal has been refinished. That's the case with pretty much every single kit build, unless it says, like, Battlefield Pickup. That said, I was told that a lot of the kits came in in really good condition, some looking unused. Now, unused is a relative term. Probably unused from uh, after the military used it and then refurbished it and put it in storage. And we see this a lot with a lot of guns. So... There could be some old wear and tear that was there from the military days and has just remained. And honestly, with older kits like this, the 1960, a 61, this is more likely. The later kits from the 70s are less likely to have old wear and tear and are less likely to have been refurbished multiple times. Because a gun like this could have gone through refurb more than once. So they definitely did refinish the metal. However, they said they did not refinish the wood. Now, that's not to say it was not refinished in Russia. Again, refurbishment's a thing, or outright replaced. 
I've seen that firsthand with Russian guns in Russia. They would refurbish them and then put them in storage or sell them off. So, yeah. Plus, the finish on it just doesn't look like an American refinish. When things are refinished in America, frankly, it's painfully obvious. So, they say most of the kits, again, they had hundreds of kits, if not thousands, were in good shape. I'm sure, out of that number, some had wear. Or, even if they were in good shape, how were they stored? Maybe they were in a container close to the surface, they got wet, you know, things happen, rust happens. So, I completely would believe it that some random parts here and there would have some old rust. Keep in mind, that's the nature of surplus. Be it a surplus pistol, sold as it is, or a gun built from a, you know, bag of old parts. And from what they said, these guns came in as bags of parts. And the bags were, at least presumably, all from the same rifle when demilled. These weren't pieced together, put together, matched around. Again, not because I'm saying they wouldn't do it, more like it just wasn't economically worth it. Like my top cover's got a little bit of kind of misshaping to the edges, just you know, wear and tear on time. Honestly, stuff I just kind of expect on old parts. Heck, check this kit out. This is my early Polish build. By the way, this one does have the lightning cut. Transitional rear side. Anyway, I had a few of these kits come in. And I actually picked this one and kept it for myself. Because I liked the honest wear and tear. This is a gun that looks like it's got some, got some history. Especially this top cover. Check it. It's got a crack. And I knew that when I decided to pick it. I've had this for years. I thought I could always weld it up, but frankly, it's not hurting anything. And again, honest wear and tear from service. I'm cool with that, but I, I sincerely understand why some may not be. Some don't like the battlefield look. That's perfectly understandable, especially for what these sons of bitches cost these days. I completely appreciate that. So I'm just trying to be fair. And we should talk about the Trunnions. One area that these kits very likely could have some rust, even if it's surfaced rust, is on the Trunnion. That's because... They had to be torch cut, and they were that has to be done in a certain prescribed way. And you've got a torch very close to the trunnion, and it will strip any oils, any cosmoline off, and leaves it very vulnerable to rusting. You just have essentially bare exposed metal. And of course there's slag and other things. And it's not like these get immediately cut up and then rebuilt into other rifles. These kits after cut it being cut up, could sit around for months or years, sometimes near oceans or other high humidity areas. This is not something any of us like, including those at Atlantic. It's lamentable. But it is simply obeying the rules and regulations. So there can be mild to moderate pitting in this area because of the necessity of demilling from the original receiver. Some will definitely be worse than others. But this is a forged part. I have not heard of anything that was more than cosmetic. You know, enough that actually might hurt the structural integrity of the trunnion. Not, again, not saying it can't happen, just haven't heard of it. So, if there's one area that you might see old pitting, it's going to be right in here from that process. But you may see some old pitting just from storage or, you know, wear and tear from use. But again, the kits were, for the most part, pretty nice shape. Again, from Atlantic. I'm only trying to give you the information. 
please make your own judgments. Me, though, I'm quite happy. If you want a Russian AKM, you have no import options. Your closest bet would be one of the Saigas, the SGL-21 types. Now, I don't actually have an SGL-21. I got a 31. So we'll use this KUSA-103 as representative. Either this or the original import from Yuzhmash are great guns. They really are. They're not AKMs. And I'm not just talking about one or two details like 90 degree gas block versus 45. You have a totally different front sight with different threads. You actually have a very different barrel profile. It might not seem like it, but it is different. You have a smooth top cover. The bolt group is actually very different. The receiver is actually different. And while a lot of SGL-21s had fixed stocks, you know, the 103 would have a folder. My point is, while you could put AKM furniture on a SGL and call it a day, and if that makes you happy, awesome. You'll have a really good looking, really good shooting rifle. But it's an AK-100 series with wood furniture. It's not an AKM. And it is semantics, but I, I like the history of this. I like the original date on the Trunion. I like the features, whether you get a 1960, a 1970. I like the period features that you'll get with a kit build. So there is a time and a place for a kit build. And we will never see an AKM import from Russia, even if things change, because they haven't made AKMs since 1977. So that's an option, but it's just, it's not there. Not for those who want to go for the, for the Russian thing. And that's something I you know, pointed out in the first video. Wow, this gun shot well. Perfectly reliable. And I didn't find the recoil bad, considering it's just a simple muzzle nut. And I would definitely shoot one if I got one and you, I were you. But you're not buying these as a primary shooter. You're buying them for the collectible Russian parts kit put together with what are, in my opinion, among the best barrels and receivers on the market. Certainly, each are in the top two or three of their class, in my opinion. And like I said, when it comes to imports, well, there are no Russians available, although we do have some that are quite close. Excluding the Atlantic Russian build, the rest are all imports. And all going to have honestly the same durability, reliability, and probably accuracy. Oftentimes the limiting factor on accuracy for 760 by 39 guns is the ammunition more than the rifle itself. Oftentimes. As much as I really do like it. In fact, it's one of my favorite guns to shoot because it just feels so smooth. The WBP, Jack, or Fox, either one, the only difference is the scope mounting options, is probably the least AKM. Now, it's, it's very close to being AKM. It really is. But it's a modern produced gun from a commercial factory, although they have had some military police refurbishment contracts. It has the bolt carrier in the white, and it has a smooth top cover. Again, being pedantic, yes. And again, it's one of my favorite guns, but it's probably the the least military of the pedigrees. Then you come to the Romanian guns, SAR-1, Wasser-10. Some more than others, some of the newer Wassers have some interesting choices. And if you get an older SAR-1 like mine, you have to thread the barrel and you can't add a bayonet lug if you want. I never bothered. They have the scope rail, which is not incorrect, but it's not standard. Then, of course, you can do whatever furniture. The phosphate finish, you know, is not... Well, it's under it. If you put some paint over it, it'd be closer. <laughs> but one thing I'll say about the Romanians, even though they're damn reliable, they can be the, the looser and the more rattly, although some are awesome. But, yeah. 
The Hungarian FEGs, the SA-85s, are actually among my favorite. In fact, this might be my single personal, you know, favorite project on here because this started off as a 90s import thumbhole stalker and I converted it to an AKM-63. And it's actually a very good comparison to the Russian because it too has early, early features like we talked about. Some very early like the spot welds and the eye trunnion. What a great gun. I'd say quality wise it's probably the highest of the ones on the table. And then of course the Mahdi. Just by a tiny margin the most authentic AKM. But also, Maudis can have some pretty rough fit and definitely some rough finish. Oftentimes, the wood furniture doesn't match. The paint can be gloopy. Some of the welds can be eh. even, you know, things like, like like my gas tube is actually welded crooked, like the the bracket doesn't hurt or anything. Runs great, but yeah, they weren't exactly putting the highest degree of fit and finish into these, especially later on. But even the original Steyr imports from the 80s, while they are nicer, they're not super, super quality. So those are your options. Here's the thing. 2000, give or take, is spendy for this Russian build. What are Mahdi's costing now? Post bands are 1500 2000 even more, especially ones that have factory threaded barrels like this one. Pre-bands are 3000 4000 Yeah. SA-85s were once a really good bargain. Now they too are shooting up. The pre-band versions are, well, multiple thousands, and even the post-band versions, depending on exactly which type you get, can be 1500 up. Even the venerable SAR-1 is getting close to 1500 especially if you find an example still in the box. And the WVP. They're not cheap. You're looking at 13, 1400 new. Of course, they are the only one available currently new. So there is that. So they are the cheapest and the ones available new. My point is yes, there is a premium on this Russian kit build. And yes, it is a kit build with used parts. But unfortunately, in 2024, $2,000 AK is not anachronistic. In fact, it is sadly far, far too common, including with Palmetto States. You know, a few videos back, we looked at their Tula build. They're the same money. And that was kind of the deciding factor. This Atlantic build is the same coin. I feel like the FB and the FN barrels are very close in quality both cold hammer forged, both chrome lined. It comes down to the fact that this was at least made in a former communist factory and doesn't have the big marking and just is, is correct. And the same goes for the receiver. While the Palmetto State receiver was fine, I just like the Childers receivers, and I've had other guns built on them, and they've held up well, so I, I trust them. Now, some people pointed out the whole rivet situation with Palmetto State. I understand, in theory, why what they're doing on the rivets and dimpling and all that isn't good. My question is, has that actually led to failure in the real world? Serious question. I don't know. It's one of those things, theoretically, it's not a good decision, but practically speaking, does it matter? But what I do know, this is a receiver made within spec, of course, semi-automatic only, and Atlantic is using proper mil-spec type rivets, 
and doing them right. And again, if the PSA were, say, 1500 and this were 2000 okay, maybe it's worth the PSA to save a buck. But when they're exactly equal price, here's the deal. I don't really see any area that the PSA beats the Atlantic in. I like the trigger group more. I like the receiver more. I like the barrel more. So if I wanted a Russian AKM, that's why you see a sling on it. <laughs> it shot well today, but that's not it. I want to also get out and, and shoot it when I have more time against other AKMs. I, I want to shoot it with the same ammo as my Legion, maybe my Mod E. Really get a feel for it. Because it did have, it was an excessive recoil, but you could feel it. But I think a lot of that was the fact that it has a muzzle nut. No break at all. Breaks matter a lot. Or in the case of the Hungarian and the Romanian, having the vertical foregrip really does help. I can't say that I felt like this had much more recoil than the WBP. They seemed about the same, which makes sense. And uh, I would actually say the Mod E rocked and rolled more than those two. I'd say this one is the most felt recoily gun on the table. But part of it is, of course, this stock. So, you get, you know, fair is fair. But I, I definitely want to shoot it more. But I was happy to at least shoot it once and make sure it does run and was not ammo sensitive. Not so far. And I just didn't observe any issues. We didn't have any strange issues or trigger reset. Didn't have any issues with mag fitment. Didn't have any issues with, you know, rounds going into battery. Didn't have any issues with anything I can think of. And I'm trying to be fair. And after shooting it, I'm not noticing anything weird. Like, nothing came loose, as I mentioned. Like, the hand guards and everything's tight. The top cover is fine. It's got a little wiggle to it. But so do some of my other guns. I actually say I had the most wiggly is the Mahdi. Yeah. So, really no more play than this gun. This one's getting it side to side. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, so, yeah, I just... In that, plus researching the parts on this, I like it more. I feel like the furniture is at least correct. The only thing that I'm not really completely happy with is the rear sight but honestly I can replace that I actually looked at my parts bin and I have a few sights with the uh, divots on the right side like the Hungarian would work great except it has the wrong style marking it has an A instead of uh, well what's effectively a P but I actually did find a P marked right notched sight so yeah I might swap them out I might not but yeah that's my Kind of full review. I completely understand why this is a niche gun. But it is also a limited production gun. So it's actually good that it's not in huge demand. If you want an AKM as a shooter today, I say get the WBP. Or get a Wasser 10. Although, to be fair, while Wasser 10s are still good, they're not as great as they once were, if I'm being 100% honest. You know, maybe that's a topic for another video. How the Wasser 10 is doing in 2024. And of course, there are some quality U.S. builds beside this that are just targeted more at the shooter. Now, you get this because you want a Russian AKM in the stable, hopefully with the cool marking, what have you. Anything else, guys? I'm trying to think of anything else that came up in the... Um, in the comments to look into. So, yeah, again, they're, they're not renumbering. They're not refinishing the wood, according to them. There could be some corrosion, old corrosion, that's finished over on the trunnions because of the demil process. 
But the rest of the kits, according to Atlantic, came in looking pretty good. They, they said they all came in in a bag and they left in a bag. So they, they didn't mix and match parts. And of course, the Polish barrel and the children's receiver are brand new. So, you know, yeah. Hmm. You know what, guys? It has been a long day. So I'm going to pack it in for now. I probably forgot something, but I try to be I try to do my best and be thorough for you. But yeah, drop it in the comments if you have any questions. I can pass them along. At the end of the day, I can only tell you what what any manufacturer, not just Atlantic, but if we were talking to say WBP, I can only pass along what they say because they're the ones making them, not me, not you. The fact is I I do trust uh, Atlantic. I don't think they would overtly lie to me. I mean, at some point in life, you just kind of have to trust people. And, uh, yeah, they've earned my trust over the years. They're not the only ones. Other companies have as well. But then what did you think? Have you picked one of these up? you have any of these others? What's your favorite AKM? Or maybe you prefer the original AK or the later AK-74 or the AK-100 series. Anyway, like I said at the beginning, we'll be starting to build the range soon. So if you'd like to help support that, well, check out the Patreon. If not, that's cool. Please do at least like, share, and subscribe. Share the video with other folks. And I will probably be resuming live streaming next month. Hopefully at the cabin. April. April's been a very, very busy month. I apologize for that, but life guys and but with time i have i want to keep making videos for you all it was kind of either make videos or do a live i just did not have time to do both for the last few weeks so but th that'll change things will things will calm down with that this is misha we'll catch you very soon and with some more ak reviews coming up next time